Hi, this is Shiley from Sheepishly Made. Welcome to the Canadian Goose Wool Painting Tutorial. This is the bird of the month for September 2022. If you've been following along with my bird of the month series, this is the ninth in this series. So we're on September. And this uses wet felting and needle felting techniques. So we're starting out with the wet felting process. And this starts out with laying out our wool in alternating directions in layers. So first we start with the wool fibers going left to right. I just pull out little bits of roving um, or you could use batting for this and lay them in alternate layers, just thin pieces. If you haven't wet felted before, please watch my how to wet felt video before starting this project. Um, I am not going through the entire step-by-step -step process of wet felting in this video since this is a bird of the month sequence for those who have done the wet felting before. So on the second um, layer, we're going with our fibers up and down, and you can see I'm adding in some other colors here, because um, this is going to be water. And then on the third layer, we're going left to right again, um, laying about, out a bunch of different colors. I've got a bunch of different color blues. And then to add some final details, I am taking um, just little strips of my navy blue here and leaving spaces between them to make it look more like some water. And then I'm gonna do this again with my lighter blue. So I generally do three layers of wool and when I um, lay them out on my bubble wrap is generally about um, an inch inch and a half thick of fluffy wool. And once it's wet felted, it'll be a thin sheet of wool. And then for the geese themselves, I'm just going to do two small brown um, kind of teardrop shapes going sideways. We'll add the details later with the needle felting portion of the project. So I did a little brown, then I blend a little bit of um, gray and brown together and did a little bit on top. So now we're gonna go through the wet felting process. And again, watch the how to wet felt video if you haven't wet felted before. Um, it's in the link in the description below. Um, but first you have to wet down your project um, and use a fabric mesh to make a barrier between your project and your hands and what you're felting with. So you have to use hot soapy water for this project, just a little bit of soap. And then I'll quickly go through um, some of the steps I do for wet felting, which first begins with a um, agitation with just my hands. You have to slowly increase the agitation for it to felt. And of course, this is sped up quite a bit, so I'm going a lot slower than this. Occasionally I'll peel up my edges of the mesh to check and make sure everything's in the right place or to straighten my, up my edges a little bit. So I'll do this for a few minutes before I go on to um, keep wet felting. There's lots of different methods for wet felting, including using a foam roller and using, um, they make these little handheld felters. This I'm, get, I'm preparing it to use a roller with. See right there is a roller. And then after I've rolled it, um, make sure after you have you think you've completed the felting to do the pinch test where you pinch it. And if it feels like it's one piece of fabric, you are good to go. But if it still feels like separate fibers, you need to continue felting it. So I usually felt it with my hands again before moving on to the fulling process. And fulling is different than felting. Fulling is a process, um, it actually shrinks your wool down and gets it to the final stage it needs to be in before you let it dry. So I use a couple different techniques. I use a hard cardboard tube um, and I roll it on itself to full it. Um, there's other methods such as taking your piece and throwing it at the table repeatedly. That does work. 
These are just my chosen methods. So after you're done felting and then fulling, make sure to completely rinse out your piece and let it dry completely before needle felting. So here we are for needle felting. I've got my wool painting on my felting mat and I'm blending some white and tan together to start out with the breast of the goose. So both of them are gonna be facing towards the left in this video. And if you have my kit, you'll have my template so you have a great idea of the sizing of the bird. And this will help guide you. So we're starting with a little bit of white on the breast. And then it will continue up into the black of their neck, their long neck. And um, at this point, I am using like a 36 triangle for most of this felting. My multi noodle tools, um, the pink pen type one has three 36 triangles in it. Just helps me felt a little faster sometimes. This project, I don't use it as much because uh, places where I'm felting are a lot smaller. So now we're adding some more detail and color to the goose itself. So the back tail feathers is what I'm working on right now, actually, I'm using my dark brown and making it pointed at the um, end where the tail goes. And then underneath on the bottom of the goose, again, they have a white feathering underneath like their tail portion. So I'm adding that white in there. Make sure at any point, if you need to, please ask questions, comment on the video, um, or pause and rewind if you need to go back and watch something again. Here I'm just working on the detail of the beak. I know it's hard to see um, these smaller details on these videos. Um, if you're using the template, you have a good idea what the shape of the head and the beak are. Um, I recommend also using a finer felting needle if you're trying to achieve smaller shapes, which is generally going to be a 38 or a 40 spiral, sometimes a 42. I, us I usually use a 38 or a 40 depending on what I can get. By adding this little bit of blue wool, wool here um, at the belly of the goose, um, it made it sink down in the water a little bit more. So I added some more of that detail to it. Used a little bit of the light, lighter blue and darker blue, kind of blended together with my hands. And that blue tool is another one of my multi-needle tools. I generally have three to four needles in that one. If you don't have a multi-needle tool already, I highly recommend it. It is a great tool that helps speed up your felting tremendously. So we're just repeating kind of the same process here for the second goose, starting with a white breast and then working on the neck and the head. 
in that little bit of white um, strap that the geese have on their head goes um, on each side of their head and underneath their chin. And then we're adding the other details to the body, including that darker brown for the tail feather and the white for the feathers underneath the tail. If you, and really, if you wanted to stay super simple, you could almost stop right here. But if you want to have more detail, um, to follow along here, I am blending a little bit of gray and black together. So I'm using this as my highlights. So I talk about highlights and shadows a lot. Um, this comes from my drawing days here. I've always been an artist. And highlights and shadows are huge to make things look lifelike. So I'm putting highlights on the top of the head and on the beak. That's generally where the sun or the light is going to hit more. And then I'm taking a little bit of black and made a ball for the eye. You can't really see the eye since it's so small, but I did a little ball of black and then I did a little tiny bit of white in the center of the eye and a tiny bit of white around the one half um, of the eye around the outside. You're definitely going to be wanting to use a spiral needle here for this fine detail work. The triangle just grabs too much wool when you're trying to do these small pieces. And if you watch any of my other bird videos, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about here for the eyes. Start with a black circle and then add your white highlights and details. Okay, now we're going to move on to some of the um, final details here on the feathers of the geese. So I don't generally make each individual feather on these wool paintings, um, but I use my colors to make it look like it. They have that the, it's feathered. So I just add a little bit more um, of my white and tan blended together for that white breast, just didn't have enough. And then I took a little bit of my tan and brown and blended it together to get a little bit lighter color here. And that's what I'm adding on. And there I'm blending a little bit of um, brown and black. I'm just using this to make some more um, shadowed areas, darker areas. And then I'm blending some brown and tan or uh, gray on the top there just to give it a little bit more highlight. I like to layer colors because um, it does show through. And it does give it more depth. So I layer a lot of colors. I'll go back and forth between dark and light. So it's not so much me changing my mind in the moment, it's layering colors for more depth. And 
And here I'm adding little stripes of gray. So this kind of gives more feathering effect. So it's going to be like on the bottom half, um, mostly of this goose. So I did some angling back towards the right and then some angling up towards the right. Then again, I'm pretty much going to do the same thing for my second goose there. Add some more lighter color, darken up the areas that are the darkest. Usually the areas that are going to be underneath something or towards the back of something um, behind something are darker. And here I'm blending a little bit more of my white and my tan. And I'm adding just a few more little highlights here. I kind of did in between those little stripes that I added. And a little bit on the um, back of the goose. And that is pretty much it for our goose here today. So thank you for watching the tutorial. If you have any questions, please comment below and subscribe to the channel. Give this video a big like. So we'll see you next time. Happy felting.